you are now about to witness the awesome, crushing might of Knuckle-Up! All right, this is uh, the insane birthday edition of Knuckle-Up. I'm sorry, I got no music. I got nothing for you. I got I ain't got nothing for you, man. I got no intro. I got no intro bumper. I got no music. I don't even have anything but white spray paint on my face. You know, you guys have been here before, but let me tell you what happens at Team Sorrel on your birthday. What happens at Team Sorrel on birth in your birthday is that you have to fight. You have to fight a minute for every year you've been alive. They rotate guys, you know, new guys, one every minute in on you. As those of you may know, 828 is my birthday, August 28th. And uh, there weren't enough guys there to rotate on uh, on me, but we did 50 minutes in six-minute uh, swates. And the only concession they made to my advanced age was that, unlike uh, uh, Peter Bracamonte, Team Sorrell's Peter Bracamonte, who last night had to fight 28 minutes, one minute each time, different fighters rotated in with no rest between I got, uh, I got, uh, 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 I got uh, uh, a minute between, 60 seconds. So, uh, but that did, didn't count against my total time. So I did 50 minutes with one minute rest every six minutes. So uh, I'm a little beat. I sprayed the anti-bug spray on my face. You can hear, I'm sitting here. My mother's about to take me out for a birthday dinner. It's decent, nice. Um, so I'm going to do a brief show, a short show for you, which is all right because I've only got one thing to talk about. And the only thing I have to talk about is the John Bones Jones contretemps with, uh, with Dana White over the cancellation of the Dan Henderson fight. And it will come as no surprise to you, possibly, even though I, I've denied the fact that I'm a John Jones nut jumper, it will come as uh, no surprise to you that I think that this was fucking out of control. I, I think this is the this was a meltdown of fucking ec epic proportions on 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 the role of uh, Dana White. I think it was the single most destructive, unprofessional thing that he's ever done. I, I think it, it was beyond the fucking pale. You know, I think this was the kind of thing. That you that 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 makes me think that uh, 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 that, that makes me think that we're not too far from Bob Arum and and Don King. The very least of, of which I could say is that he has not been that he has not kicked somebody to death. That we know over money owed to them. This is Don King. Two men killed killed two men. Uh, Mike Tyson, you know, Mike Tyson's quotes are Don King say it all. I was in business to do some business with Don King back when I was at Code Magazine. This was a, a, like a $20,000 deal. And it got hung up over Don King not wanting to pay for the t-shirts. And I'm not even talking about paying the whole ride. It was a co-branded deal. The magazine was going to pay for the t-shirts. $2 a, a, a pop. And Don King had to come up with the other two. He's like, whoa, 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 I'm not talking about $20,000 worth of T-shirts. Talk about a $20,000 deal. The T-shirts were like $1,000, of which we would pick up $500, and Don King was like, whoa, hey, 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 $500. David Stern, take all these guys, Bob Arum. Well, Bob Arum is close to Dana White in this regard. But this thing, putting dude, putting dude on Front Street beyond the fucking pale, you know, beyond the pale. I, I mean, you know, because let me tell you something, John, beyond the pale, especially when he shoots down, when he shoots down uh, 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 Nick Diaz versus Anderson Silva. So yeah, Nick Diaz, he lost his last fight. Who the fuck is he to jump to the front of the line? That's a fight that people wanted. Never mind the fact that they haven't put enough juice into, there hasn't been enough trash shit, there hasn't been enough excitement behind the positive. There's been a little Twitter war. 
But there hasn't started to be real heat about, about John Jones versus Chael Sonnen. So you just turned this down with Nick Diaz fighting Anderson Silva, a fight that actually has much more serious juice, saying about Nick Diaz, whoa, 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 what right does he have? And Nick Diaz, fucking a year ban for having THC metabolites, and the guy's got a California Cannabis Club card. Chael Sonnen gets busted, not only for a felony, but for fucking uh, steroids, where she gets some crackpot doctor to say he's got TRT, and this guy jumps to the line because he's a good fucking talker. Look, the rap industry is built on guys who are good talkers. Like Steve Ballinger, Dr. Steve Ballinger once said, rap, a bunch of clever talkers. <laughs> it's not singing, it's clever talking. And I was like, okay, you're down. I like, there's, a, there's some rap I like, I, I enjoy, but, uh, 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 you know. So Chael Sonnen now becomes a hero. It, it, John Jones, people are looking for a fucking reason to hate this guy because, because America hates a winner. They found that he, he's cocky. He's kind of, that's all they could come up with. He's cocky. Saves the woman at the show the day of his fight. He's cocky, huh? And he, uh, uh, and it was kind of when he got into the car wreck, people would feel some sympathy. Ah, dude got busted with DUI. But he became kind of a loser. He's like one of us. I got busted. They got busted. Johnny got busted. We all got busted for DUI. We're all part of the same loser fucking club. And then people found out he drove a Rolls Royce. So it's like, ah, he drove a Rolls Royce. Charles, everybody loves Charles the Mask. Lewis, fucking, well, he's dead, so he's the ultimate loser. But he did die in a fucking Ferrari, racing down the freeway. So we got a reader who writes a letter. We'll just call him Brian M. Since I, I don't know that the guy wants his name on it. And he, he makes some claim. He says, I'll just read you what he says. He says, uh, he says, what a clusterfuck week. He says, I'm not jumping on uh, the John Jones hate train, but I can't see the sense in his decision. How do you turn down a fight with the biggest loser in MMA? Basically a lesser hendo. Jones needs to up his political savvy big time if he's to avoid being made an example of. And I tell him he's so wrong, so wrong. I think this is the kind of character-defining moment that Dana White's mom was talking about. Jones did the right thing. Because let me tell you something. If Jones loses his fucking fight, there's no mercy in Mudtown for Jones. Guys, and I only say, I don't think he's Chelsea Sonnen can beat him, but he is a fucking southpaw. You have to get prepared for this. And it was a hap that was a jacked-up plan, haphazard plan, haphazardly planned. I mean, Nick Diaz was talking about setting up Anderson Silva way out. He says, Jones did the right thing, and, and I'm saying to, to Brian M. And White calling him on it is like a guy yelling out of the window of his apartment that his girlfriend won't swallow his spooge. Pathetic. And he says, Brian M. says in response, I agree that Jones was reasonable to turn down the fight, and canceling the whole event was never his problem. He's right. Dana then goes fucking thermonuclear and cancels the whole fight. Brian put, puts his finger on it. He goes, the unsellable undercard was responsible for that. All the transplanted matches are ending up on non-pay-per-view, which demonstrates their actual value. But he says, to use your analogy, Dana is yelling out the window, my wife won't swallow your spooge. And that's actually working to turn people against Jones. Jones can defy Dana as long as he keeps winning in spectacular fashion as Anderson can. And I'll be rooting for that to be the case. And keep in mind, only John Jones can stop the fucking Dana White train. Anybody else, anybody on the loser's side gets fucked. You do what he says when he says not a good business model and when he doesn't when he defies it based on what his team said Dana is a flipping out calling ja Greg Jackson a fucking sport killer you had to lose a fight your undercard sucked co-main event would have worked you know so then you try to force Machida to do it then Machida goes okay well maybe September 22nd then Machida goes well you know September 22nd I'm not really going to be ready by then so Machida gets to bow out and that's okay Machida is not called a sport killer. Nobody's jumping on the anti-Machida bandwagon. Why? Because Machida should get ready for John Jones, like John Jones should get ready for Chael Sonnen. Or unless it's just a beating. If it's just a beating, well, let's not put that old. Let's put the old Chinese lady in there, the one with the bag of groceries you see crossing the street at midnight. See how she does. It's just a fight. I will pay per view that. John Jones. John John Bones Jones against the old. Chinese lady with a nylon bag full of vegetables. 
You know, uh, speaking of Anderson, he goes, did you notice how he offered to save the event with a short notice booking hours uh, after the event was canceled and is now enjoying a swell of public support without risk? Jo Jones should take notes. That's how you play the public like a violin. Right. Anderson Silva and Jones, a friend. Anderson kind of, kind of, kind of quietly kind of puts fucking Chael Sonnen in his box. Goes, I'll step in, essentially fight Chael again. Like Tito said about uh, Shamrock, I'll fight you once a week if you want. And I say people are looking for a reason to hate him. I, yeah, I just say what I just said. Uh, but I say, you know, uh, uh, Dana's crazy if he doesn't think Jackson's going to get even more aggressively guard the interest of his fighters. And the reality of it is he never would have done this to GSP. And then when, when Anderson Silva steps up and goes, I'll fight Chael, Chael is suddenly fucking quiet. And then Brian, and he has, he has a burst of insightful thinking, goes, there were half a dozen ways to play this, and Jones Jackson played this the worst possible way. Agreed. Agreed. It was a mistake to say taking this fight would be the worst decision of Jones's career, or something to that effect, because in the ears of dummies and media manipulation, that sounds as if Jones is scared. He's not. Personally, I think Jones should have followed Silva's example with the Forrest fight. I could use a PR boost right now. Give me a fool to smash. Jones could have done the same thing with Sonnen if he wanted. It's a mark of respect to Sonnen that he actually didn't take the fight. But okay, he didn't want to. That's fine, too. What Jones could have said in response is that he said Sonnen wouldn't get a title shot he didn't earn, and Dana agreed, but now Dana is changing his mind to cover up his own shitty booking. He could have pointed out that Hendo concealed a fight-ending injury he had for the past three weeks. He could have pointed out Dana's hypocrisy in allowing Machida to take all the time he needed to prepare. He could have pointed out the hypocrisy of Dana saying that he is just a fighter who should fight when called upon, that he is not a businessman, then laying all the consequences of bad business decisions at his feet. He could have also said that he isn't ducking Chael any more than he is ducking the loudmouth in the bar or on Facebook that challenges him. Those people didn't earn it either. And any moron off the bar stool can step up while the actual contenders have something big to lose, career relevancy of having lost to the champ twice, as Rich Franklin did. He could point out that Chael's pattern of hyping a, a fight to big pay-per-view buys then going down in flames would make taking the fight easy money, but he rejected the easy payday, and this is key, because you, the fans, deserve a proper title fight between the two best guys in the division. He says that, the Brian M. says, I listened to Dana's conference calling the cancellation and, and appraising Chael. He said he would convince people that he would win, uh, uh, not, uh, not, and he is capable of winning. Dana basically admits that the fight would be a hype that couldn't actually deliver as a competitive contest. Jones or his proxies were foolish not to point this out. Sadly, Jones and company allowed Dana and the UFC to frame the debate and make this about the poor fans and undercard fighters who suffered Jones' decision. Jones did nothing wrong, the UFC did everything wrong, and now he's the one who has to apologize. As I said, Jones needs to up his political media, savvy, media relations savvy in a big way if he's going to stay ahead of the very skilled manipulations of the UFC machine. A competent media handler or advisor could have made the situation look good for Jones and, the U and made the UFC look like shitbirds. And I say totally true. And he says, I came across an article stating that Jones's PR manager had quit before all of this. Uh, uh, and in the middle of it, they say he had quit because as Jones had gotten more successful in the cage, his 2011 campaign might be the best in sports history. His popularity has waned among fans and media. His publicist quit last week, frustrated by Jones' prickly style and the inability to deal well with the media. So I think that means that I'm going to be sending an email to Greg Jackson offering my services as a PR manager. Believe it. Somebody out there listening to the show roused out his, uh, Greg Jackson's email address, uh, John, or, or way to contact John Jones. I will do it before the fucking, uh, I will do it before the ink dries. So, um, you know, so there you go. They, I told you that, that this whole show would be about, uh, would be about, uh, uh John Bones Jones. It, it is. Vita Belfort stepped up to find jo John Bones Jones. You know, the guy, he's just fucking suffering from, from relevancy, trying to stay fucking relevant. Anyway, it's a good fight. He, always, he makes a claim that it gets Anderson Silva, he fucked up, and he could have been a better fight. Okay. That's okay. John, John Jones is innocent. 
do not, do not be swayed by this bullshit. I say do not be swayed by this bullshit, but right now there's a Republican convention in Tampa, and it blows my mind that anybody in America is seriously considering hiring a guy who won't fucking tell you what he makes and how he makes it. A Republican said, hey, we've never had a president who had a Swiss bank account. They know it's preposterous. It's preposterous that they're going to let him get away with it. The public is bored, the media says. The public is bored. The media just has to figure out a way to sell this story. This is an outrage. It's an infomnia. Why can't we know? His father said we should know. He's with This and Citizens United, I hate to get political on you, but this motherfucker is trying to get away with murder, and I hate it. I hate it. I hate this Republican Party to the marrow of my bone. And everybody makes excuses like, oh, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And it happens every time they get elected. They fuck this country in the ass. You know? And I'm not just saying that because I'm poor. Don't be fooled by this vehicle. It's my mom's rental vehicle. So anyway, that's the end of the show today. I'm about to pass out. This is my water jug. You can see how little water I've had. Don't get taken aback. That's Voss. I got that when I did the radio show up in San Francisco. This is tap water in the Voss bottle. So uh, uh, mark my words. Mark, you know what Dana White did? He single-handedly guaranteed that the next three fights that John Bones Jones fights in the UFC, he will murder the people he's fighting. I'd like to think I've got a psychic connection here with Jones that I'm feeling this thing. And I'm, I'm so fucking angry. It's like, you know, I come from a punk rock tradition. I step out on the stage and people start booing me. You know what I love? I, I love it. I love it. I feel much com more comfortable with hatred than I feel with love. <laughs> love flips me the fuck out. As anybody who's been emotionally close to me knows. <laughs> ah, I fuck it up. I'm working on changing that. But hate. Ah, that, 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 that. I step out on the stage and people start booing me. Or I meet a guy who doesn't like me. I, I fucking love this guy. I'll needle him and I'll just, you know. I love the fight more than I love the love. Well, you know. But the thing that's deceiving about that, because I figured the greatest perils will come from fighting situations, so you might as well be, the, be, the, be able to defend yourself, and that takes primacy. Staying alive takes primacy over everything, but it's different. The love thing will eat you from the outside. I'm dealing with that now. I've got my mother here looking at us. Someday she will die. I will have to deal with this. I'm not ready to deal with this. <laughs> not, you know, what the fuck is that? Love is a dangerous thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, like fighting is a dangerous thing and I wouldn't have a single day on earth without it or not being able to do it in order to get my point across. Resisting, let the good make right this evil wrong. Resisting the forces of tyranny. Being able to stand up to the bullies. Somewhere there's a, there'll be a boot stomping ahead. There'll be a kid getting poked, picked around by a good man. This is the Grapes of Wrath speech by John Steinbeck. Somewhere there'll be a, a, somebody getting kicked down a flight of stairs, and I'll be there, kicking them down that flight of stairs. <laughs> and it's the same thing with love, you know. Somewhere there's somebody getting their fucking heart torn out of their chest. There's a sausage where it shouldn't be. Somewhere, so, and I'll be there, standing up for the little guy. Well, in my case, the big guy. <laughs> yes, I did just make a penis joke in the same monologue I gave about my mother. How's that? <laughs> How's that for class? All right, I got stuff in my nostrils. Anyway, you got 20 minutes of a show. Live it and love it. Enjoy it. We'll see you next week with real interviews. I'll be sitting back at the studio or maybe from team, live from Team Surround. I hope you dig it. We'll see you later. Happy birthday to me. And if you didn't give me a cash payment as money, knuckle up. What's the email address? What is the, the Facebook thing? I'm not going to shill money. I think it's knuckleup77 at yahoo.com or, or Eugene S. Robbins. I, who knows? I don't know. Knuckleup77 at yahoo.com for sure. I can't remember what the new one is. Oh, it's pinko95014 at yahoo.com. Cash donations to keep the show. Pay your pals. Pay your friends. Keep the thing going. Um, I just give all the money to Scott Kelly. Scott Steak and Champagne Kelly. Who lost a bunch of weight without my tutelage? I feel terrible. I failed him. He said, We're going to, at the beginning of this tour, UG, we're going to lose some weight. I go, Yes. He gained weight. I gained weight. 
He gets off a tour with me, goes home, loses like 25 pounds. Yes. I'm bad if you're trying to suppress appetites. Anyway, that's the show. This is round number 220. I'm your host, Eugene S. Robinson. We'll see you next week.